Where Megan and Matt and six months ago, we purchased this 50 year old vintage Airstream trailer to live in full time. But it needed a lot of work. So we gutted the entire thing and separated the shell from the frame so we can restore this iconic trailer the right way. In our last video, you watched Matt take apart the old subfloor revealing a rusty, rotted frame. He scrubbed the rust off of the good metal and painted it with POR15 to prevent rust from coming back. And since then, he's restored our old frame from this to this by welding on new metal pieces, replacing the rusty front panel, and giving it some good old TLC. He also installed a new gray water tank that was not original to the Airstream. All while dealing with the snowy New England winter. Now that brings us to the subfloor. And in this video, we're switching out this 50 year old rotting wooden subfloor with one that will never rot. The entire process took seven full days of work, marking the first step to actually putting our Airstream trailer back together. Thank you to Yunaka Gear Co for sponsoring this video. Now let's get started, shall we? You're looking at what's left of the 50 year old original Airstream floor, and as you can see, it's pretty busted. And in this video, we were replacing this vintage, AKA really old floor with this beautiful new composite floor. This is Kusa board, it's quite expensive, but the best part about it is that it will never rot. This whole time, we've been gutting and taking it apart, but finally, we're putting the puzzle pieces back together. Real quick, I need to install this gray water tank sensor before we put the subfloor on, which leads me to this video's sponsor, Unaka Gear Co. Thanks to Unaka Gear Co, we're gonna have all of the electrical system that we need to power all of our future adventures. This is the core of our system right here. This is a 3000 watt inverter charger from Victron, 600 amp hours of lithium batteries, charge controllers to harness the power of the sun, DC to DC charger to charge while we drive, and everything else we need to monitor and control the system remotely. One of the best things about Yunaka is how incredibly convenient it is to order everything all in one place. We were able to order this entire bundle, including the wire down to the lugs, heat shrink, and zip ties. Thanks again to Yunaka for sponsoring this video, and be sure to hit that subscribe button so that you can follow along and watch me install this as soon as we get back to putting our Airstream back together, which is coming up real soon, guys. Promise. Let's get back to the subfloor. I'm gonna put it kind of towards the top. And we'll get into that in the later video when we're actually installing our electrical system. The first step isn't actually the subfloor. We're gonna be measuring and cutting a piece of Kusa board for where our freshwater tank's gonna sit, which is right underneath the frame. If you guys watched our belly pan video, you saw how much of a hard time I had getting out the one inch plywood. Oh, come on, Matt. I tried something sketchy. It didn't work out. It was a nightmare, it was super heavy, it was rotten. We have an extra sheet of Kusa, and I think this will be a perfect solution for down below. Wow, it is so warm out today. It's probably 65 to almost 70 degrees out in the sun. I'm actually kind of sweating a little bit. Boom, boom, boom. I didn't know how to use one of these in our first video, so I knew how to make like a right angle and that was about it, but I've learned so much already with uh, this Airstream. That might be the smoothest thing I've ever cut my entire life. It felt like butter. And I'm completely covered in this fiberglass stuff. How heavy do you think that thing is? Um, it's a pizza. Probably less than 30, eh, probably about 30 pounds. And it went in the first try. <laughs> Just kidding. Little minor adjustments need to be made. <laughs> and it didn't even go in the second try. What? But you know what they say, third time's a charm. So our next piece is this front curve. And it's kind of funny because this front piece is a lot shorter than the other pieces which don't need to be cut at all. I can't touch my overalls without getting fiberglass oh. stinging all over my arms. I shouldn't either. I feel like my body's on fire. Toughen up. I can't, I'm a weenie. Wee. The question is, should we cut the shape to the template that's been outside all winter or the bow? <laughs> I don't exactly trust this to be an exact template. <laughs> Megan asked, did I measure? Of course I measured. I got everything that I need to know in my Airstream handbook that I wrote myself. I can't even read my own handwriting. All right, so we have 92 and a half inches across. At what point? At one and seven eighths. 
Hey, what are these measurements? What did I do to myself? 40 inches? What the hell is that? Oh, steel plate. 6 and 1 16th. You know, if I learned SketchUp, it'd be over for these bitches. I never claim to be good at anything. I don't figure shit out ever go. Yeah, 92 and a half is the measurements I got on the shell off thing too, so. We decided it would be a later problem because we're both really stubborn and neither of us is giving up. at it, it looked correct, but there was no way for us to really confirm. And by this point, we were just over it. It is day two of replacing the subfloor, and last night we got a little tired and cranky. We didn't eat anything, so we stocked up our fridge with some food. We shouldn't have that problem today. Yesterday we were going off of measurements, and we really need to trust the template, because the template is really going to tell us everything we need. And we're trying to line up based on the holes for the subfloor. What's up, Cooper? This is my brilliant measuring tool. The stick goes in the hole, so we know we're perfectly aligned. So these are the actual floor bolts that we're gonna use. And I'm just making sure that they fit. Oh. So we have 36 and an eighth. 36 and 1 sixteenth. We have 36 and a quarter. Yeah, so that's the problem. It took us up until now to realize the fact that this is not going to be perfect. And we could spend a whole month trying to figure out this problem. No, it's there. Push down on that side because it looks like it's up. We really needed to keep this moving, so we're going to figure this out once all of the other pieces are cut. All right, so let's just figure it out. Yeah, let's just push this other one right up against it and see what happens. Great, perfect. This is exactly where this piece needs to be. It is even on both sides. appointment and Matt made an oopsie on this guy. Thankfully we had two extra pieces because two pieces came kind of damaged. So the place we bought it from gave us two extra pieces. This is only my second DIY project so I kind of got to give myself a little bit of grace. Yeah. Yeah. You're amazing. Let's no. Do Let's do it. By the way this stuff is fiberglass and it gets everywhere because when you cut it it's so fine. This little dust. So I've got pins and needles everywhere. Yeah, we call it the hidden needles. It feels like you're getting jabbed with hidden needles. You know, to be fair, when we built out our van, I also messed up a few really important plywood cuts with that. So it's just par for the course. You live and you learn. Uh, where's the Sharpie? Uh-oh, I start to lose stuff. How about we clean up your space a little bit too, Matt? This is what I do all day. Make sure that Matt has a clean working space because he will not clean up and everything's just in his way. I think the real lesson learned here is to no matter what, just take the extra time to prepare. I kind of rushed the last one and just made a pretty obvious mistake. This is the really inspirational time where you're like, you know, people think that you need blah, 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 People blah, think blah. you need to know how to do stuff to follow your dreams, but really, you, you can just figure stuff out and dreams. never give up and accept that what you don't know is holding you back from becoming the best person of who you are, right? Yeah, say it and believe it, Matt. Yeah. <laughs> Lost myself for a moment, but I had to just remember, who am I? What am I capable of? Can I do anything? Can I do anything right? Do I suck? 
A little bit. It's okay. It's okay not to suck. Oh, the invisible needles. Ugh. Why would you do that? I don't know. It's because you suck. I know, I suck so much. Where? All right. I think you're great. I think I am great. All right, one cut. Now we do the little squarey things. We got this. Hell yeah, man. Definitely do. One more cut tonight. Final piece of our Kusa subfloor is cut and roughly on. We have a lot more work to go with this project, but we're super happy with the progress we made the last two days, and we'll catch you probably tomorrow with an update. If not tomorrow, then uh, whenever we come back. There's a beard, there's a stupid shot. All right, we're finally back after a really, really nice break and going to Florida and getting all of that sun. It's pretty cloudy. It's gonna be pretty cloudy all week, but I got some new gloves. I'm going through like a bunch of them during this entire project, but nice and fresh. Truthfully, I'm not feeling super well, neither is Matt, but um, the show must go on. Today, the goal is to install the freshwater tank. The aluminum piece under the freshwater tank is in good enough condition to rehab, so that was my first task of the day. One of the potential downsides of using this Kusa board is that people say it doesn't really hold screws well. So I'm just gonna do a little sample test with just these little baby dinky screws and see if they do. Should I get like a hammer and try to pry it out? Okay. okay, so I did pull it right out. I mean, if enough people do it and no one's like, oh, don't do this. Alright. I don't think it's happening. No, I think... I think it is weaker. I think it is weaker. Alright, so the results are conclusive. This is a professional study conducted by absolute professionals. Kusa does not hold screws as well as wood does. So when it comes time to actually putting in our furniture and all of our cabinetry and everything, we're going to take the advice of the many people on the internet and through bolt through the floor. And uh, so we're not gonna have the belly pan back on until probably the very last step. The use case we're doing right now is we're just connecting the aluminum on top of this Kusa board. So we're not really too worried about it coming apart. For our next trick, we have to support the rest of the water tank by putting back on this piece. This is the original one from the Airstream. It's got like a, a Z formation type of deal. Bolt it on and then, oh man, and then we're on to the next thing. Woo! My dogs are barking. We're gonna put the heating pad on. Yeah, it's good enough. Good enough. Okay, going down. 
Last thing we had to do was stick the water tank sensor on, and with that, our fresh water tank is officially installed. And we couldn't help ourselves, but we had to take our subfloor for a spin. Woohoo! Nice. We did it. Almost. We almost did it. Wow! And since we're ending the day a little bit early, we had enough sunlight to tape out our layout and give ourselves a head start in the morning. Not gonna lie to you guys, yesterday was a bit of a rough day for me. I was absolutely not on my A game, but let's get you guys caught up with everything we did yesterday after we put down the cameras. We started off by putting our new subfloor pieces on. We got a new tarp so that we don't have to put it back into the garage and then take it out every single time. We also rehabbed these wheel wells that are 50 years old, but I think we did a pretty good job and they're gonna hold up for another 50 years, I think. We mapped out our layout, and this is really important because based on where we need to cut the holes for the tanks, we might need to change our layout a little bit. I believe it's the second or third video in the series where we mocked out our layout. It's changed since then, and this is the final product after that change. Now we're gonna have to change it again, but let me show you what we have in mind. Coming through the door, and we have our wood stove, and this is from Tiny Wood Stove, and we're really excited to install it because we would love to do some winter camping. Over here, we have our kitchen galley. In the back, we have our bed. We're gonna be sleeping lengthwise like this. Should be a queen-size bed. Right here on the left side, we have a wardrobe, which is 11 inches, and that's where we'll keep our clothes and things. Right next to it is our wet bath. We're gonna have to make some modifications to this because it looks a little small. Right next to it should be our fridge and pantry. And this is the questionable area where we need to mix things up because we had planned to put a desk right next to it. With that desk, we would have a pretty significant hole in the middle of the room. So we're not sure if the desk will fit. We also might need to make our bathroom a lot bigger, so we might have to opt out of the desk altogether. We're really trying to make that work, but we'll see what happens. And then in the front here, we have our chunky L-shaped couch. It should be a pretty big couch. Over here is our table, and we're hoping to use the original table from the original Airstream. Slide, and then you lift it. So now we kind of have this side table here, but it also comes out and we have full table. I would love to reuse this concept if it works in our new layout. But either way, we need to make the cuts we need to make for the tanks and we'll have to reconfigure our layout around it. So let's get to work. I think we can get a lot done today if we have a good attitude. I have a great attitude. And it's projects like these that we're super grateful that we made a point to make sure that our original subfloor is intact so that we can use it as a template. We have four cuts we need to make first. That's the fresh water tank, the gray water tank. Ready? Yep. Is it perfect? Only one way to find out. Boom. The door annotation, so. So the door is 30 inches and a half and this indent on the template is way longer, but we have to trust the template and there might be a reason why it's longer that we just don't know. And then the little battery box in the back. We've been looking at this for the past 10 minutes or so, and I think, realistically, it's a really small box. I think we're better off just patching the hole and making a wrap out of some fresh belly pan aluminum. It's in pretty rough shape, and um, I think to make it kind of worth it, we also, I don't know where the key is, so that's a problem. This box itself is really small. It's in really rough shape, I think. And then after that, we're gonna be cutting the radius to the front and back bows. So we were arguing for, I don't know, quite a while about whether or not we should cut the new piece of subfloor to the old piece or to the bow as our reference. And we kind of just decided to meet in the middle and cut between both of them. And with that, our final piece of subfloor is cut I'm really stoked how this is coming out. We basically just cut the curve of the back piece. We used the bow as the only reference point that we had because you saw the original floor, it's totally shot. And it is actually raining, so we're gonna clean up, pack up, and we will catch you with an update. A second from now. Three, two, one, Woo. it's mine. All right, a little update for you guys. We just secured this 5 8 PVC material to the bottom of the CUSA boards. They kind of sandwich each other in. 
there's some gaps between where the cross members are and the frame rails so we just had to make sure we compensate for that gap we chose this stuff because it's not wood it'll never rot and uh i don't know it's really easy to work with so now the next step for us is to secure our water tanks right now they're just kind of floating free so we're just going to stuff them with insulation and some random blocking and then we're going to move on to actually securing the floor down big day big day big big day I'm using these two inch elevator bolts and this is what's gonna secure the subfloor down to the frame. I did a little test runner here, let me show you how it works. I basically drilled a quarter inch pilot hole all the way through, put on a lock washer and then a regular nut. I, allegedly, the lock nuts don't do well with the KUSA from what I hear on the Facebook forums. This is gonna overhang down and I was able to just tighten it up by hand enough to where this is actually, should be flush. Yeah, and it just sucked right in with the KUSA. So I was originally thinking I was gonna need to use a Forstner bit to countersink it, but I just tightened it up by hand and it just sucked right through. So we're gonna put a layer of epoxy on over after and I think we should be in perfect shape. First, we have to rivet some aluminum pieces back on. Rivets, baby. My first rivet ever. And then I just press it like a gun. Yeah, so we'll get it fully sheeted in the hole. Okay. Yeah, and now just squeeze it and it'll... That's pretty cool. Oh, that's gonna be so fun. We have so many to do. <laughs> All right, next. We riveted two more pieces around the wheel well and got a good night's sleep because tomorrow would be a big day. Today, hopefully, is the last day of replacing our subfloor. And the last step before we have to take before attaching it to the frame. We got here a little early, which is, um... Uncharacteristic. Uncharacteristic, yeah. But first, it's time to take out our C-channels. All right, just in case you don't know what a C-channel is, and I didn't before this project, we have this, and this is what connects to the shell of the Airstream. This space right here is the space in between the wall and the shell. This is where we would put our insulation, and then underneath, this is where we sandwich the subfloor into this crevice right here. This makes sure everything stays intact. And then this is where we connect it to the shell. Pretty fun. We were able to reuse all of the C channels from our original Airstream, but the back bow was pretty questionable. So we ordered new aluminum to make well. patches. Yeah, man. The reason why this back bow is a little questionable is because it was in the back where the floor was rotted and we've been questioning whether or not to use it because they don't make these anymore. Reusing what we have is the best option and hopefully we can patch some parts with this extra aluminum that we just got. To achieve some super straight bolt lines, we chalked up our subfloor every 12 inches from the center. While I got the nuts and bolts ready to go, Matt tried to see if we could use the existing holes, but we quickly realized we weren't going to get the right angles. So we decided to drill all new holes. This is the first bolt. This is the one we're looking at. So we're trying to suck it from the bottom. As you can see, it's just spinning around. So there needs to be pressure on the top from keeping it from spinning. So this is a two man job for sure. Voila, all right. Thankfully, we were able to use the old holes for the outriggers, so Matt worked on bolting those down while I went to work drilling out new holes. And my hands were pretty numb after this, not gonna lie. All right, we've finished drilling all the holes and you're probably like, wow, that was so fast. But it really took all day because it's late afternoon now. I went from having no tingle sensation to just only total, total tingle sensation and now my hands. We're both really excited, even though we seem like we're not excited. It's just that we've been out here all day and we're ready for it to be done. Let's get it going. We're using set XP epoxy and a double barrel caulk gun. Cool. All right, let's get to work. The first application was pretty hectic. We didn't know how much time we would have to epoxy the seams and bolt all of the bolts down before it dried up, but it turned out we had more time than we thought. So we went ahead and globbed it in the seams, bolted it down, installed the C-channels, and added a layer of epoxy on top of the seams and bolts. For a 23-foot trailer, this took about three to four hours to complete, and it was nine o'clock before we were able to finish and go home. Yesterday was our longest day yet. We worked on this for eight and a half hours straight. It ended up going pretty well. Our subfloor is feeling really sturdy. It's nice to have kind of one 
unified piece. The set XP stuff works. It looks like it works great. Super hard, super durable. It stunk. Oh, it definitely stunk. I would probably wear a mask the whole time. We wore them like on and off, and every time I didn't, I kind of regretted it. One thing that I would do differently next time, if there is ever a next time, is I would make a jig to countersink all of the bolt holes. They did suck through with the Kusa pretty well, but if they weren't dead set and they were a little bit on an angle like some of them were, the bolts broke and it was just a lot of extra process. Here we got a broken bolt. This is what the bolt should look like. This is our broken guy. Look how messed up my shoes are. And for the final stretch, we are installing the front bow and our C channels. We also cut new pieces for some missing areas. Honestly, by now, everything was hurting. Our bodies and our brains. But with a little help from Cooper, we finally got it all done. 91 and 5 eighths. Woo! Well, we did it. It's finally done, and this is probably the hardest part of this entire project. And now the only thing I gotta worry about is reconnecting it. So in our next video, we're gonna reconnect our new subfloor and new frame with our old shell. And make sure you guys are subscribed and watch our older videos that we put out way too long ago because we're gonna get really going because the weather is getting warmer. Thanks to you, Naka, for sponsoring, sponsoring this, this video. video. It's actually like really high right now. Again, we're doing it. Ready? Yeah. Go. I think I need to kind of pick up the back now and move it. Yeah, you see how we're off here? This is holding up. This right here. We made a pretty dumb mistake, something we definitely should have caught. <laughs>